Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back. Today I'm going to talk about my adventures I had at the VR days. As you may know, last week I went all the way to Amsterdam. Well, all the way. I live in the Holland land myself, so it's pretty much uh, next door. But yeah, we went there to visit the one and only VR Days. This is a convention where the industry comes together to celebrate the latest uh, VR slash AR hardware and software. And I can tell you, it was so awesome to be a part of that. Seeing all that innovation uh, in Europe is great and it's, it's good news for, for the industry in general. So it was exciting to walk around there to connect with companies, to try new products, stuff like that. So yeah, that's why I'm making this video, to kind of share the experience I had at VR Day. So I hope you are going to enjoy this video. Uh, before we start, let me explain you what the VR Days are, because I think it's important for you to know what this event is. It's, it's fairly new, it just exists for two years now. This was the, the second time they were hosting it. So here you go, here's a quick lesson on uh, VR Days. So yeah, the VR Days is a three-day conference and exhibition that focuses on virtual, augmented and mixed reality content. At this year's festival, attendees could expect a compelling range of keynotes, sessions, workshops and seminars with over 140 thought leaders and experts drawn from the health, technology, business and art sectors. When we arrived, we spotted many companies on the show floor, such as the VR engineers with their wide field of view and high resolution Xtol headset, Manus VR who were showing off their haptic gloves, Intel that demoed Skyscraper featuring Dwayne Johnson, the virtual Dutchman that gave people a chance to experience a new way of doing business calls and meetups, of course Toby was there to present their eye tracking technology and last but not least Tesla suit with their famous haptic ready player one fest. There was just so much you could do, there was so much you could see, so we had to start off somewhere and that's why David and I decided to go to a few keynotes and one of them being from the founder of Unity, also known as David Helgeson. You could also listen to uh, Yaroslav Beck, the CEO of Beat Saber, Lucas Rizzotto, founder of Where Thoughts Go and many others. I think it's super interesting and uh, inspiring to hear others talk about the state of VR and how they see the future of VR. So being able to go to these kind of keynotes is always a big plus in my opinion. It gives you a lot of insights and that can be useful. So anyway, what did I try in terms of hardware and software? Well, that's a good one. Let me start off with Manus VR. This is a Dutch company who's working on high-end data gloves that bring intuitive interaction to virtual reality. And I finally had the opportunity, finally after years, to give it a try on the show floor of VR days. This wasn't my first time trying a pair of haptic gloves, but it was still impressive to see how accurate the finger tracking was and how natural you could interact with the objects around you. Also the fact it's completely wireless is truly next level. Most of the ones I wore in the past were tethered, so being able to have more space to move your hands felt freeing in this case. There was almost no delay either, with 5 milliseconds of uh, latency you can barely notice it. The gloves from Manus have a gyroscope, an accelerometer and a magnetometer to bring full finger tracking everyone is waiting for. And yes I know, Ready Player One is sooner or later becoming a reality and Manus VR is really pushing the boundaries of what's possible. But for now these haptic gloves are getting targeted towards an industry that uses them for training simulations, motion capture, healthcare projects and robotics. So for now these are not consumer toys, but who knows, maybe in the near future you will be able to get your hands on it. Haha, <laughs> you see what I did there? Hands on it. But bad jokes aside, if you are interested in what uh, Manus VR is working on, then check out the link in the description below. So let's move on, shall we? Next up, we checked out the Axtol VR headset that is getting developed by the VR engineers. When I tried this massive looking HMD, I was first of all blown away by its 5K image. 
The clarity was a true pleasure for the eyes, I can tell you that. For the people that want to hear some juicy specs, well, here you go. The Axtel HMD gives you a resolution of 2560 by 1440 per eye and uses two quad HD high density OLED displays. You notice that straight away when wearing it, but what was even more noticeable was its 170 degrees of field of view. Being able to see more in the corners of your eyesight is amazing and will definitely become the standard in the near future. For now, the Axtol is mainly getting used by enterprises for automotive and engineering purposes. So I'm afraid that as a consumer, you will not be able to get your hands on it because the prices are pretty high and it's also not the company's main focus. If you are a race, flyer, space sim freak, you would love to have a VR headset like this one though, I'm not gonna lie, it would give you an advantage for sure. Right now this headset is just not for consumers, but next to Pimax and Star VR, it does pave the road for new future standards. By watching this video, I know what you think. This headset must be extremely heavy, right? Well. No, it's actually not that bad. Wearing it with the strap they provided felt solid and you could even tighten it up on the back of your head and surprisingly also on the top by using a dial. I do think that with fast head movements uh, it might be a different story and wearing it for a couple of hours could be problematic but I haven't had the opportunity to test that. By the way, this was my first time trying a VR headset with a 5K resolution and a wide field of view. I would love to try the Pimax and the Star VR, but I haven't had the opportunity yet. So hopefully in the near future, I will be able to get my hands on them. But anyway, this Axtel VR headset is full of surprises. And one of them being that it can just automatically search for the right IPD. You don't have to do anything. It just does it by itself. I do have to be honest here, it did not completely work. It was getting very close to my actual IPD, but it was still slightly off. I do believe that in a few years this is not going to be a problem anymore and that it's just going to work flawless, but for now it's still work in progress. I almost forgot to tell you that I could also use my hands, because inside the Axtol they have a leap motion built-in, that in this particular demo allowed you to open the doors of a car, interact with its dashboard and grab the steering wheel. Overall I was impressed and its wide field of view is definitely becoming a standard in the near future. It's fantastic to see what technology we already have so early on and what VR has in store for us. Trust me there were many many more things at VR days you could try like for example the Haptex uh, VR glove, Somnium Space was there to show off their social application and they also had the Halo Awards. Surprisingly enough one of the lucky winners was the Anne Frank VR experience and I gotta say well deserved. I am so happy they finally got some recognition for their work. I know a lot of you might be surprised I did not talk about the Tesla suit in this video and the reason why is because I tried it a couple of months ago and uh, most of my thoughts have already been shared in the podcast I'm doing. So yeah, if you are interested in what I think of this uh, haptic suit that came straight out of Ready Player One, then be sure to search for Everyality slash VR Inside Podcast and then you will be able to find it. So yeah, I tried loads of hardware and software. I met a lot of new people from the XR industry and many who I know for years now. I could talk about this, this VR Days event for uh, hours but I think I'm going to wrap it up. It was a blast that's for sure. It's so cool to see the industry coming together in Amsterdam at an exhibition dedicated to innovation on uh, VR and of course AR. And that's about it. That's where the video ends. Now I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, this was just my story about what I have been doing at the VR days and what my uh, thoughts are on certain things I tried. If you did, then be sure to slam that like button, of course. And also, let me know in the comments below what you are most excited for. Um, are you excited for uh, future hardware? Are you more excited for software? Or is there anything else? Let me know. I'm very, very curious. And now it's time for me to sign off. And as I always say, and I see you guys uh, next time. See you in the metaverse. Bye bye. See ya uh, later. So uh, all the links are in the description below to all these amazing companies. Go check them out. And also next year I will definitely be back 
on track at the VR days. Stay tuned.